Hello, everyone. This is Susan Gerbic from the Skeptics, um, from Psychics Explained YouTube channel. And I have a guest for you. Oh my gosh, you're going to love this. Okay. So today we're going to be doing some, some, this is, this is going to be phenomenal. Uh, so I have somebody I've never met before, but I mean, we've talked and talked and talked and talked, but never in person like this before. So this is going to be really interesting. So I'm going to let you introduce yourself to her. Introduce yourself to the, the audience out there, all, all the people out there. Hi, my name is Sam and um, I'm a grief counselor and I have experience with, with Thomas from, I'd say the late 2014 to mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And um, Can I yeah, you? I'm here to talk about some some things that we have found out. <laughs> One of the things that um, I'm going to make sure I get clear right up front is Samantha, Sam and I have some different. I don't believe in mediumship. Sam does. But we're not going to discuss that too much because we all have our belief systems. Mm -hmm. And where we are agreed is that there is something wrong with going on in the Thomas John world. Yes. Yeah. And so this is just going to be really interesting. So, okay. I met you. I first reached out to you, gosh, a couple of years ago. You were going through, you were ill and you made a video on, and I reached out to you to see how you were doing. I yes, a long, a long haul COVID. Yeah. And I remember you were really, you were in bad shape and you were still a fan of Thomas John and you were involved with him i want to hear how that happened how did you get involved with thomas john and all that just go go tell us okay i came across a video of him on youtube that was recommended to me it's the one that it's very early thomas mm -hmm. i don't know if you've seen it but it's the one that has spooky music playing behind him and he talks about the old men playing card games and there's a he talks about someone's dog and he goes i'm not making this shit up He's calling himself out. So that's the first time I heard of him. What, what then, year do you think that was? That was 2014. Oh, so that was really early. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then I followed him on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And that, that's how I you know, was looking for, I put on his, I, I joined his wait list for a reading. Mm -hmm. And then I came across, that was the first time I ever had a reading. I believe, no, I attended his class in rural Michigan mm -hmm. in 2015. So that was my first experience with him per se. So yeah, I attended his class in Michigan and something just seemed off with him mm -hmm. because- you, you got a reading at that class? No, he approached me after and said he saw cameras all around me. Well, I am- well known with my photography so if he just looked up my name that's the first thing you'd get on google mm -hmm. but he told me he saw cameras around me so so he did have your name before you went in yeah because he, we had to give we had it with our credit card information so yeah there were i think there were 20 of us oh so that was hardly anybody i mean you know 20 people is not a pretty small crowd so did he give readings to a lot of other people there and no he I'm going to bring, I brought this up to you before. Something was wrong because he was sweating a lot, sweating profusely and talking to himself about how he cancels a lot and people get mad at him. And if he has a cold or has he been drinking the night before, he has to cancel because if his health isn't, if he's not in good health, he has to cancel. But he brought up alcohol and he was sweating really bad. And it's right after the whole thing came out about him with Chicago. With oh, the oh, the... With the craigslist. The Craigslist. It's tell, it was tell like you, tell it was like the day what that after is. that came out. It was okay. the day after that came out, and he was mumbling about it in front of people. Okay, tell people because I'm sure lots of people have no idea what you're talking about. With him mumbling and stuff like no, that. No, no, the Chicago thing. Oh, yeah, where he um, told people that he had apartments for him, and they put a deposit down, and there was no apartment. Well, that came out the day before I met him, and I, I had the class with him. So he was upset. 
And I think he found out during lunchtime that that came out because he was upset and he was sweating and mumbling to himself and pacing back and forth and something just didn't seem right. And he approached me after, because he was ready to, after the class, he was ready just to bust out, but he told me cameras are around. And I said, can I ask you a quick question? I said, where do you see me moving? I was moving to Louisiana in a few weeks. I didn't know that yet. He told me I was moving to Oregon or Washington. Different part of the country. <laughs> Have you ever moved to Oregon or Washington? Never. Oh, okay. Wonder where you got Louisiana. Yeah, but he asked me if I'm a professional medium during that class. You have that look. I would think so. Yes. <laughs> he said, as he was like, are, are you a professional? Do, 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 do you do? And I go, no. And he just, he asked me that. I thought that was strange. He should know that, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm going to be doing a lot of that with my, with my eyes. Like, <laughs> okay. So that was 2014. Then what happens? You're following you know, on Facebook. He's sweating a lot. No, so that actually, let me take that. That was August of 2015 because I had signed up for his wait list in 2014. And they called me in January of 2015 and told me it was $325. And I said, I'm not paying that. No way. I'm going to pay that for anybody. I'm only, I'm sticking to hundred dollars or less because mm -hmm. I don't have that kind of money. And that's when I asked his assistant, I said, is he any good? And she goes, well, a lot of people rave about him, but I've never had a reading from him because I don't like the, don't know the future. That was his old assistant said that. Well, the future, but can't they just, doesn't he talk about like past? Like she, she, would, yeah. she told me that she, um, she wouldn't know because she's never had a reading. That's strange. That's very strange. That's very strange. I would think that that would be like, working at a candy factory, but never eating any of the candy. And you know, she told me, you better call back the next few hours or your spot's gone and you're going to have to wait at least six months. No. Okay. So you're like at a hundred bucks. You didn't, you didn't go into this wanting to hear from a dead family member necessarily, right? You had other. 2000, 2015 going into that was a lot of life transitions and I didn't know where I was going to be working or moving to and I was just uncertain and I watched one of the dumb dumb videos with him and I was like maybe he'll have some guidance mm -hmm. which I know now I could have just found it within myself but that's why I right. originally had reached out and I thought the class he was talking about how he could help you find you know thin and your intuition in that. So that's why I attended the class. Right. Let me ask you another thing. This is going to sound personal, but I, I don't think it is as personal as, as I'm meaning it. But a lot of the people who become followers of Thomas John are in a situation where they're very vulnerable, where they've just lost somebody or they're extremely lonely or, um, yeah. you know, it's a weak moment in their lives. Not necessarily that some people have always felt believed in mediumship for whatever reason but some people were kind of skeptical of it and then something happened and then that was the time they kind of got into it did you feel like did you feel like this is a time well you said it was a transition in your life where you were had a lot of questions but it wasn't I don't I know, just feel typical. Mm -hmm. no because I had lost someone very close to me in the around in 2006 mm -hmm. but I was okay with it myself. I knew, you know, I, I've kept her memory alive. Right. I haven't, I didn't, I didn't need him to say that name, but we'll get into that. Oh, right. Okay. So, so yeah. So, so you were, you were a little atypical. You were not the, the, mm -hmm. the, a lot of the women who I reach out, who I meet, almost all of them that, you know, respond to me are really in the grieving process or, you know, they're, they're in, they're in a very vulnerable position. And I think that's why, and you're in that vulnerable position and you just want to hear from your loved one. If you have, you'll just fork out whatever money you have. That's why I always said, I'm not spending a ton. That class at the time, I think was $35, $40. It wasn't a lot per se mm -hmm. compared to his other, how he charges for, you know, individual sessions. And right. That. Wow. Okay. So going forward next. Yeah. So then in the end of 2015, was 
where I saw he said he was filming a documentary and I responded to that. He said he was filming a documentary and I sent him an email and it's a clickbait thing he likes to do, like switch, kind of switch things. I received an email like, oh, the documentary's filled, but you can be on the radio. Oh, that's what that email means. Yes. Okay, so I didn't quite understand what he was talking about. A document. What documentary did he supposedly do? I don't know of a documentary. Never what came documentary? up. I don't think it was truthful in that sense. Oh. I think it was kind of just lure people in. Like, oh, yeah, you're still kind of being like, per se, it's like a documentary of me on the radio. <laughs> oh, oh, so he had posted what, like on Facebook? Mm -hmm. saying i'm doing a documentary would you like a reading for it was it like that yeah yeah and then you respond saying hey i'd like to be on there let me put that screenshot yeah, you said it was all that. filled but i could be on the radio and you think that's the first thing that that you yeah. yeah definitely okay let me share this for people who are watching right now oops um okay here we go so this one right here. So you wrote, so you wrote in, hello, I'm interested in the recorded reading I saw on Facebook. Thank you. That's what you say, right? Yes, Let me pull this up bigger so people can see that better. Hello, I'm interested in the recorded reading I saw on Facebook. Thank you. And you'd already known of him and, and had talked to him in person at this time. Did he know who you were? maybe he remembered me from the class okay so it's a vague and you've got an unusual last name so it kind of would stand out I think maybe in some yeah. some ways okay and then so Thomas writes you back and this is 2015 would you like a reading on Thomas's radio show tomorrow so did Thomas write you back or did somebody else write you back I don't know if that was him we never know for sure do we Oh, no, I guess not. So it could have been somebody using it, but the way they worded, okay, so we filled the documentary. That's done. So would you like a reading on Thomas John's radio show tomorrow? Okay, so that happens. Then you say, yeah, sure, that's a great idea. And then let me see if I find that other screenshot you have. Oh, here it is. So then... Yeah. Okay. Let me share this one. Oh yeah. Okay. So this is starting to make a lot more sense now. Yeah. Cause I was, I saw the screenshots. I was like, what? Okay. So this is the, this is Thomas John supposedly sending you a, an email and it's, and it's saying it's this the 15th. Are you getting calling for a reading today? Whoever Barbie is, which we don't know. You think it's one of, his assistants right i think it's one of his old assistants yeah and then it's again it's got all this information about thomas john so they write to you and they say you're going to call for a reading okay got that and then you respond back by um okay then i'm, I'm just going back and forth with the screenshots because i don't want to show a screenshot that has something on it we don't want to reveal um okay so that here you are writing to thomas this is on facebook no it's youtube what is this you're writing on what medium this is my email it was just short this is email this okay. is okay and you yeah. said yeah i'm gonna ask about my love life and then he's whoever it is says i'd try calling at 9 55 is there finishing up another show yeah this is in the morning okay got it and then so, when I called, uh -huh. I had to say my full first and last name. Oh, really? To the screener. Were they, did it feel like they're waiting for you or just you were just the person calling in? Well, they were waiting. So how do you, how do you. Got that vibe. That? Just okay. because of like, say it was like a name, like it was a recording, say your full name, mm -hmm. you know, wait. And then I could hear the other people that he had, I, a few other people that he had picked up for. And then they had, they said, oh, Samantha's on the line. She has a question about her love life. Okay. Now, does he know your Facebook profile at this point? Whenever you, okay, to hot read you, he's going to need to know your full name, which he's got. And they knew in advance you're going to be coming in at least the full day, right? Because you- yeah. 
-hmm. you um, you're messaging him the day before. And some of these messages are like eight in the morning. And it was like nine at night when you call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of time to find your full name um, on his friends. Are we Facebook friends? I mean, how could he gotten, have gotten your Facebook account is what I'm saying. Well, he can easily he can get a lot of stuff off of me for Google for my job, my uh, obituary that I was unaware of. And those were the two th the things he got. So at the time I was surprised because I didn't know that the, my grandmother's obituary was so easy to put when you put my name in, it comes up on the first page. Your like, first and last name pulls up her, yes. her obituary mm -hmm. because you're listed in there. And a lot of people don't realize that you, yeah, I didn't at the time. Yeah. People will say, Oh, I don't see how he got my grandma because my grandma wasn't even alive back when Facebook was around. It's like, well, yeah. I don't, why do you not understand this? <laughs> They leave, yeah. your, they leave information in other ways. And so also you could be listed on, well, you're listed in places. So yeah. So you're on your grandmother's obituary. Okay, go ahead. So before he even gets into the love life, he's like, I have to stop and say something. He goes, yeah, Henry's here. Lid's here. Alice is here. And Helen's here. And they're all having a real good time. They're having a drink. They're drinking heaven. And Alice says she loves you because that was your grandmother, right? Very specific. Oh, whenever they start saying stuff like that, I know there's got to be something to find. And yeah. what were you thinking at the time? I was. It's sad because I didn't know it was that easy to pull up. I'm like, oh my gosh, the video was right. He's really that good. I'm embarrassed to say now, but at the time I was like, wow, he's really that good. And then he brought up my love life and he said, you know, in this coming year, you're going to meet someone at work who's just as sensitive as you. And his name starts with a J, but he's already going to know who you are before you meet. That never happened in 2016. Did you no. finally meet a J no. at work? No, never met a J at work. No, haven't dated anyone at work. <laughs> J or otherwise. Interesting. So no, and don't be embarrassed by that because this is really, you know, it's very uh, compelling. It's, I can't, you know, when I'm watching these videos and things, if I had not known what I know about him, I would be like, wow, this is great stuff. Yeah. And then, so we fast forward a bit after that. And I'm thinking at this point, I'm like, wow, he's really good. Mm -hmm. And he had one of those, um, you pay 20, I think at the time it was 20, $25 where you go on his online gallery kind of thing where he runs, where he would do like a, it wasn't Zoom yet. Maybe it was Skype. I'm trying to think of what platform that was. It was probably Skype at that time, mm -hmm. but he reads how many people he can read on there. So mm -hmm. I joined that. Funny enough, he picked me out. He said, Alice is here. Your grandma's oh. here. How long, said, after, he how long after your other reading? Six months. He said, grandma's here and grandma's and, and you're not living where you should right now. Grandma's grandma's saying that you're not living in the correct state. Well, I could see Louisiana when you look at Facebook. Mm -hmm. And then he said, you're not making enough photographs. You need to make more photographs. Grandma's saying you're not making enough artwork. So get on that. Okay. So you thought. Again, I thought, oh my gosh, she's right. I'm not making enough photographs. <laughs> I'm a photographer too. I can say that's true for me as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing enough. So yeah. when did you finally Google? Okay, go ahead. Let's, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see where this goes. So that's 2016. And then I was on a, some, some lives, lives that I would attend his Facebook lives. Mm -hmm. um, so let's fast forward then. So I moved out of Louisiana Mm -hmm. 2020 but I would come back to Chicago area in the summer oh boy this is a doozy so I went to I want to say this was 2018 and it was in Lincolnwood Illinois and I saw him live with Susan Northrup Susan yeah Suzanne Northrup oh my god she's priceless what a, what a what a sweetheart ish no <laughs> yeah I've written quite a bit about Suzanne okay so you saw and him she, too. 
So she did her live before him. He kind of, he came on after her because he said he didn't want to pick up energy or things that she had said. So he wasn't in the same room. And when he came in, he'd close his eyes and he'd close his eyes to do this a lot and turn his back. I didn't get a reading. But he kept saying there was a lady vacuuming. He goes, this lady keeps vacuuming down the aisle and nobody's claiming who this is. And she just keeps vacuuming. Who's this? And everyone's like, I don't know. He's like, whose mother really loved to clean and would always vacuum? Okay. Yeah. So that was no reading. And at that point, I started thinking, that didn't seem too good. Like, he was kind of vague. Mm -hmm. stuff it just didn't seem like the reading I was like yeah again at this point though I've spent a little bit of money but I was like at least it was only like maybe 30 at that time it was still lower price so I let's think when the Facebook live so I'd attend Facebook lives and then I did not that's when he had me he called me out in a Facebook live was on 2020 after I had COVID and you could see my stuff on Facebook yeah so I you found it out to me that's where and I he found said I had a mystery illness. Yeah, and I remember that. He said I had a mystery illness and I would be better by all by the end of the year. But mm -hmm. That didn't happen. Mm -hmm. He told me I had a compromised immune system. I don't have a compromised immune system. That's not what happened. I have some nerve damage and some inflammation. I don't have a compromised immune system. And he he said I was a teacher because he saw that on Google. I'm not a teacher anymore. And I said that. I'm like, I'm not a teacher. And he, he stumbles then. He's like, well, 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 you know, he moves on to the next thing. Right. But I said, I'm not a teacher. He was naming stuff I knew he directly Googled. When did you get the part about the grandmother? When you're, when did you figure out that the obituary, you're named in your grandmother's obituary? It wasn't until this, this summer past summer really I didn't know that I don't know I I didn't it's sad I didn't know that until then we've been talking for you and I a, a year hard to tell in this pandemic everything feels really time like yeah I don't think it was it was until the when we talk about now me purchasing just curious about what the future holds I purchased that discounted reading for $99 okay so that purchase was made in June, 2000. So yeah, two, 2000. Yeah, this past year, right? It was 2022. So. 2020. so this is something it was supposed to be a reading that was done over the phone or like a Zoom call or 30 minutes on the phone. Mm -hmm. But I thought the wording in the email seemed very suspicious and I almost didn't pay for it because I had a horrible feeling I should have trusted my gut mm -hmm. because it was like, oh, all of these slots have filled for the next week, but we have some coming up in October. We have some coming up in August for a reading. And then he gets, sends me a message. Do you have PayPal? Just, do you have PayPal? Like, this is kind of reading red flags. Why I purchased it, I don't know. But there was never like a signature. It was just like, do you have PayPal? Give you this. And then when I paid for it, I didn't get any date or time until I had to keep pestering. And he told me, you'll get a reading this next week. Many blessings. I get a reading that next week. I had a pester and pester for a date that overlapped with his spirit circle. What, was he going to sneak out during the spirit circle and go into a 30 minute reading for you on a break or something? Yeah. So the night before I said, what time zone are we in? I assumed it was Eastern because mm -hmm. that's where he works out of nothing. So if it was, he said nine o'clock was my appointment. So I assumed if it's nine o'clock, that means eight o'clock my time. Because right. that's, so nine o'clock came and went, 920 shows up. So I sent a mean, I sent a nasty message. And that's when he responded and said that he was running late and he had to make things better. And he was out of breath again, running around. And he said, I don't want to be a little B-I-T-C-H, mm -hmm. but you have negative energy. You're not very nice. And uh, I told him, I want my money back. I don't want another reading. He said, I can schedule another reading for you this week. I said, no, I don't want another reading. I want my money back. I said, I supported you for many years when I shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't like that. So he does have quite a temper. Yes. So then he called back the phone and my mom answered. And that's when he said, do you know, I know you don't know who I am, but my name is Thomas John and I'm psychic. And when my mom was about to say something, he hung up the phone on phone on her. <laughs> he also on a Facebook live, I should mention this was another Facebook live. 
he said that my mother had a sore, she had a, um, a sore t- gum or a tooth. And we know that my, now my mom had cancer at the time. And he said, nothing else was wrong with her. She just needed to go get to a dentist for her tooth. You know, it is, it's so sad, Samantha, because people are constantly asking me, what's the harm? What's the harm? What's the harm? And I was mm-hmm. telling Lisa Wexler, she was talking about the same thing that um, Thomas John, or no, another medium had said that they saw a tumor or whatever it was. And she goes, well, what's the harm? So they found they found a tumor eventually, you know, and I said, okay, but when a, when a, if you believe the psychic and they're telling you something medical, then if they say everything's good, you may just skip appointments. I mean, or you just don't go because the psychic said everything was good and things might not be good. And yeah. And, and somewhere, I don't know because, you know, I attended lots of his lives. I'm trying to figure out the year here. It was either 2021 or 2022. There was a summit event that was on zoom and it was supposed to be different mediums. And he told me that I won the ticket. Okay. To attend the summit. That was $75 ticket. I got it for free. It was on like a Saturday. I, I, again, I don't know if it was like end of 2021 or early 2022, somewhere in between there, you know, time with the pandemic and all the time, kind of everything seems like it melded together. I have no idea what day it is anymore. (laughs) But I had a, he told me I was going to get it. And I had to hound them like for a month, like, where's my free ticket? Where's my free ticket? Where's my free ticket? I had to send out 15 or 20 emails. Finally, I got my free ticket and he appears the last, I don't know, 40 minutes. And what did he do? He brought up everyone in the obituary for me. He brought up again, Emma, Lid, Alice, that is just the, the names he spewed out. So yeah but i didn't have to pay so that's what i'm glad that for that because i wouldn't have paid that <laughs> i just, just figured have, it's free. Have an obituary read back to you <laughs> yeah if it's free let me see and there was a, an awful medium on there just awful if i could look back i'll let you know but it was <laughs> um i'm sure i have the email somewhere with the summit but this one was was bad because she was just people would be like no no and she'd be like oh well, maybe I'm getting this for someone else. So you have an unusual last name. Yeah, it's easy to find. It's easy to find. And you're all over Facebook. And when you're on Facebook, you just click on somebody's name and there's all that information. There's so many ways of finding information on people. Do you, he doesn't have, he's so disorganized. I'm sure he doesn't have a great memory. And I'm, um, I'm wondering if if he keeps like a file of people's names and what he knows about them. I'm wondering, you wouldn't know that, but you know, I mean, like if you, if it was me and I was, and I was do, in this business, I would keep like, I would have your name and kind of with the data I read you and what I told you. And I'd have it like on a spreadsheet or I'd have it on index cards. I mean, that's kind of how the mediums used to do it in the old days, but that's what I would do. And I don't, I wonder if he's that organized to do that, but I, it kind of feels like he would be. He's so disorganized. I mean, when you see him at those events, I don't, and I want to know, I want to know your opinion on this because you've witnessed him live. In an oh, event. Yeah. I want to know what's he doing on his breaks. He rushes out of there sweating. I don't know. Is he going to the bathroom to look people up? Is he sick? I don't know, but he's just like bolts out of there and he always has a handkerchief wiping his sweat. He wasn't that sweaty when I met him. When, okay. he, when I met him, he was on stage. He stood there for two hours. He didn't move. He had his eyes closed. I was, I was like, wow, he's perfectly still for two hours. And at one point, there was like a giant speaker with a water bottle on it. Far, you know, like you had to take three or four steps to go to it. And I was with my boyfriend, Mark Edward. And this is Operation Pizza Roll. And and he gets up and he moves over to the water ball and Mark nudges me like there's some something written on the water bottle. And he went over and he got it and he didn't look at the water bottle. And he took a drink and, and then he went and put it back. And then he went back. He was on for two hours, totally still, eyes closed, never got no break. And I was I was amazed by that. 
Now, when I saw him and this woman was grieving the loss of her child, uh-huh. she was bawling her eyes out and she was in front of me. And when she didn't know something, he would get like snappy. Like, let's, let's yeah. like, you, you better know. Let's come on. We got other people here. He wasn't yeah. kind to her at all. Right. Which upsets I've, I've seen him do that many times. He did it to me. He did it to me. He's uh, when Mark and I were there, he said, who's smoking, smoking, smoking. Who is it who smoked and quit smoking? And, and, and Mark said, Oh, that's me. Because it, during operation uh, pizza roll, Mark and I don't know what's written on the Facebook pages. That's the whole different subject, but Mark's like, Oh, I think that's my, my brother. And then Thomas John says, no, it is not you. It is the twin. That would be me. So I was playing the part of a twin. It's the twins brother. And I'm like, Oh shoot. You know? And he was really upset. He's like, you know that you're, you, um, you're the one. And I'm like, oh. and I said, I'm really confused. This is just really like coming at me really fast. I'm it's really emotional. And he said, and I have this audio people, you can find it on my website. He says, well, we have other people here, so you need to kind of move on. You need to get up, get with it and go. I'm like, oh, gee, I'm sorry. If you're talking to my dead twin brother that I don't have, but if you're talking to him and I mean, that's an emotional moment and I'm sorry, I'm not with it so quickly. Gosh, you know, I would be really stumbling yeah. on my words and everything too. And I don't like what I see of him, as we know, on the, on Facebook, if someone he doesn't like what they say. He acts, he, he starts harassing them a bit. Yeah, he does. Makes, I'm mocking them, which oh, isn't very nice. bad words. He's not a very, not a very godly man in his words. Many that, blessings, if he likes to say. <laughs> many <laughs> blessings. No, this oh, guy is no. not, no, he's not a very pleasant man. So, okay. So you've had this long years involvement with this guy following him and, and, and you're suspicious of things and you asked for your refund and, and what happened with the refund? $99. Did you finally get it? Um, no, because <laughs> I think he was sending me emails and he was, and I told him that he could, he said, I'll refund. I can refund by check. And I gave him my address still waiting on it. Waiting. How long has it been? August of this past year. Recording this in, in April. Yeah, because then he didn't like kind of what I said about him online, so he blocked me, and I'm sure he won't be giving me my refund now. But if he said, I'm going to write you a check, Sam, give me your address, and you said, here's my address, give me my $99 back, you should have written the check within a couple of days, stuck it in the mail, not looking at your yeah. Facebook or... Because he didn't have PayPal anymore. People don't know this. He yeah, had why does he have PayPal? It was... It was um. He told me he didn't have PayPal anymore. So what I did was just to verify he didn't have his PayPal account anymore. I sent a penny to his account through my PayPal just to make sure. Cause I thought, mm, let's just, let's just make sure. And, he, and it bounced back and said, this is no, this account no longer exists. And I figured it's because of people requesting their money back and all the complaints. PayPal will shut your account down. Yeah. yeah. We don't know exactly the reason people, but it's uh, yeah. kind of shady that, that somebody is, not able to have a PayPal account and he's going to write you a personal check. And we know people who have gotten personal checks. I've got copies of it. So we know that they, he does that. I know one person had a money order. So it takes, I would have liked it even through, through Google, he could have sent me the money, but he wanted it. Then he said he could have sent it. I think it was, I don't have Zelle. I mean, the one that I don't have, you know, like I said, it could be PayPal, Google. Uh -huh. this. And that's I mean, a cash app. Zelle's a cash app. And so. that's very suspicious when you're using cash apps and not visas. And I think you could yeah. still use a visa card. I, I think. I wasn't could. sure. It just like, oh, I don't want to use that. I don't even have it. Uh, it seems weird that you don't have what I paid you on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how he kept in how when I paid, he said, do you have PayPal? Like, why aren't you taking it on any? And tells me to send it through, not for a service, through friends and family. Oh, and we've got screenshots of that where he says, send it, like, I think one of them was send it through my mom's account. If you're making a payment, send it to my mom. Another one had it to his, uh, Jay Juarez, who's his boyfriend. And um, I think there's been other people's accounts too. It's not... 
their PayPal or Zelle or whatever accounts through other people's name. And I, oh, I can only under, I can only speculate why that would be. And in, and in my suspicious skeptical mind, I'm thinking he's avoiding taxes. He's avoiding income. He's avoiding um, anybody knowing how much money he has. But the problem with that is, is you're drawing in all those other people, right? So these other people that he, have these accounts, they're getting income that they're not giving to. I mean, it's just so. And I sent multiple times in emails. I'm like, this is how you treat someone who followed you for so many years. You know, I, I stood by you and this is how you treat. This is how you treat me. You know? So you had seen some things happening that gave you, made you wary. The wording, the wording in the emails just sounded like, didn't sound right. You know, they get that feeling inside. Like, I'm just glad I, I told myself I would never spend over a hundred. It should have been like 102. I wouldn't have spent it, but oh, well, 99. <laughs> it could have been a lot worse because now he's charging for, I believe for an hour in person at $1,600. His spirit so. circles are up to $500 for eight, per person for eight people. We paid in Operation Onion Ring, I paid 400 So it's been up $100 in the last year or so. Well, he's he's viral now. He's on TikTok. He's a star. How many million uh, people, how many, what does he have for followers? Do you know what number? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I wondered because I know he's on TikTok. Does he go on Facebook Live anymore? He blocked. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, people tell me he does. Yeah, and I have well, people who watch the for that stuff. I don't have to deal with it. They just send me this stuff when it's relevant to something that we're working on or whatever. But oh my god, yeah, TikTok. There's, I'm sure there's millions of uh, views. But we also know that he's paying people who are influencers on TikTok to sponsor his videos. We've got some screenshots of that as well, where he's like, somebody had like, I think she's a tarot reader. And I think she has like a million viewers, you know, subscribers on TikTok. And so she's like, oh my gosh, Thomas John's the best. He reached out to me and he wants me to sponsor him. And we're, we're looking at her follower count. We're like, well, that's why lady, he wants your followers. Yeah, yes. And it makes me wonder too, um, through the years, the people that he promotes or do events with him like you makes you wonder about people that are with him because if someone's doing this to people what do they do i mean it makes you second guess yeah um we're gonna look into that eventually that when something when when things when the blow finally comes to the world that inhabits the thomas john universe anybody who's endorsed him is going to be suspect because how did you if you're psychic how did you not know that you were who, what you were dealing with? And if he's endorsed you, I'd be really wary because that's a world you don't want to be in either. So I, you know, I would, uh, I personally, I would distance myself and I'm being vague on purpose about what's going on behind the scenes, but <laughs> oh boy, I would not have much to do with this man. So Samantha, how did you find out, like, what was, what was the last straws with you? I mean, when did you finally find out what he was doing? What was it you, how did that universe open? Um, when I had the bad feeling about sending the payment mm -hmm. and then there were crickets. And I said, that's what I was thinking. I knew, I, I knew it, but yet I still sent the payment. I had a very bad feeling and I go, this isn't good. He was up to something with that, you know? And that's that's when everything started coming together. And I I think I saw an article with you and then I talked to other people on Facebook, a few other people, and they told me and our stories were the same. And I go, ah, oh, it makes sense now. And then the obituary, and I felt foolish. But then again, I'm also glad that I never spent hundreds of dollars on a reading. You know. right. and you and i hear stories all the time people are still writing to you right telling you yes. but some people are getting their just random people are getting their money and other people aren't so i don't know how he picks who gets their money and who doesn't i'm not quite sure that myself i know one woman i was interacting with she was an executive type 
And as soon as she figured out what was going on, she Googled him. She sent the money. She Googled him, found one of my articles. Oh, she found my YouTube channel, the one everybody's watching right now. And she found it and she subscribed. Everybody, you better be subscribing or else. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she subscribed and she went through all my videos on Thomas John and she binged watched them. And then she wrote to me and she says, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did this. And I fell for it. And everybody has that like buyer's remorse kind of stuff. And she says, I immediately reached out to him and told him I wanted my money back. And here's the reasons why she told him straight up what the reason was. And he and Tracy started making excuses. They tell the same thing. They always tell everybody. Susan Kerbick's an atheist. So you shouldn't have anything to do with her. And then they say, she pretends to have a, a, a dead child when she doesn't, they love telling that story. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that they tell that story or that I pretend. I didn't know that they told that they said that to people that you pretend and don't believe. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. That's a common one. People tell me that all the time. And it goes back to operation bumblebee, which was chip coffee sting that we did. And that I presented myself as a in person. And I had my, I had a picture of my son with me as an infant. And anyway, we did a big sting on, on chip coffee my son was actually sitting in the room with us way in the back and he was in his like 20s but so I pretended to be a a grieving mother and so he's he has he has problems with that but um when you bring him up because he was bad mouthing chip coffee at the 2015 event class oh is that right and also I, saw I stung him, him in two thir- 2013 or 14 yeah, he was bad mouthing and he was like, he's not real. I can tell you that. I can tell you how to spot a real one, he said, and he is not real. So he said that. And then um, before I purchased, I think it was 2021 on TikTok, I did see one of Thomas John talking about psychics that didn't like him and he didn't know why. Oh, yeah. I've heard of this too. Yeah. Matt Frazier think or matt fraser no matt fraser makes fun no he makes fun of matt fraser yeah no he said that john edward doesn't john like edward. him he doesn't know why he yeah. said i don't know why he doesn't like me so he brought up him char mm-hmm. magno yeah he mm-hmm. said he just rolled his eyes dorian virtue i don't know who that is he was rolling his eyes about that and then james von prague james von prague yeah and he said he's jealous of him because he got a show. He's jealous of Thomas. He was going on and on about how James is jealous of him. And he doesn't know why. He's just, he just got the show. I think because there's been so much heat on Thomas John and he's been busted so many times that I think he's making a bad name for all the other mediums. Oh, and then John Holland. He was bad mouthing John Holland. Oh, really? I thought. You don't really hear much about John Holland. I mean, I don't know why he was picking on John Holland. Because he can, because he's picking on somebody. So you found my videos. No, you found my articles. Or did I, how did you, I'm trying to remember how that worked. Yeah, like the pandemic really messes things up. So I reached out to you. Then That was 2021, but someone on Facebook who had been ripped off, she mentioned, I look up your article so that's when i found the articles and reached out to you so you did that's when you found is that when you kind of well no i guess you already figured out something with the obituary with your grandmother but at some point people will will find my articles and, and they're suspicious they're looking at my articles because they already have some kind of suspicion that's what I find is there's already mm-hmm. some creeping doubt in their mind otherwise they just kind of just like, I'm not reading that no he's the real deal so when they finally read my articles, if they go through it and they they'll reach out and they'll say, Hey, oh my gosh, they told me to avoid you, Susan, that you're an atheist and you're all, you know, all these things. And so they say, um, that's when they finally realize that he's hot reading people. And so before they knew that they weren't getting their readings, they've been rescheduled, you know, 10 times or whatever it is. And that, you know, they, they understand he's a bad businessman. But it takes them finding my articles to finally get, understand this is a bigger problem. He's Googling people and he's looking them up on Facebook. And I think we should be clear about the reading you did on uh, Above and Beyond with Elise, Lisa Smith. Yeah, Lisa Laura, Smith. Laura, Laura Smith. Right? Laura Smith. Okay. 
Yeah. So that re recording you did in 2016, or yeah, it was probably like yeah. January 1st, 2016, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, of course, your correspondence was on the 31st of December, 2015. Is that the thing is, is that you reached out to him because he had, he had left a message on Facebook saying, if you want a reading, I'm doing a documentary, you contact him. They say the documentary is full, like a bait and switch. And would you like a reading on the radio? And you're like, okay. So then you call in and that's the whole, my whole point is, is that when you call in, he already knows who you are. So at this point, yeah. it's now turned into a hot reading because he has access to your name, he has access to your information. If you're a Facebook friend or you've been following him, especially if you have an unusual last name, then that's where he gets that information from and he can go in. And it just takes a few minutes to find something, especially if he Googles you and he finds an obituary like he did in your case. And, and it's, you know, it's fine. One of the things I'm trying to point out on these videos that I'm doing about his videos, I know that sounds really confusing, but if if I'm on a radio show, I would say on Facebook, hey, you guys, listen in, I'm going to be on a radio show. And I might even, if I was doing readings, I might say, hey, call in, I'll give you a reading. I mean, I, I could see that being not a big deal. But what he's doing is he's following up with these people and then he's reading their Facebook pages back to him. Yeah, he and another thing that I've noticed that he's done too, he'll say, who wants to be, what, who wants a free reading reduced? We're picking the first three people. And then he, you email and then they ask you for what else, something else, a paid reading, but it's a discounted. Oh, that, which is well, we've given up all our free readings, but now we have all yeah. with the paid readings, but we give you or a discount like, on it. Or like what he told me it was supposed to be done by the first week of july for what i inquired about but they're like oh that's all filled but we have readings that go into october if you do have paypal you know you could yeah it's and they know yeah. it's so it's squirrely just, it is and you then know, you have some people waiting it. and then you just keep paying they keep advertising advertising for readings and then people pay and other people waiting for what year? Some people have said they've waited over three years. Well, they're waiting for eternity at that point because they're not going to get the reading. Mm -hmm. I see that all the time. I've I've seen up to five years. It's crazy because I have, I have emails. I have two email accounts that are following him. Oddly, he doesn't know it, but they're just collecting, they're collecting um, spam messages from him. I think they're they're at over a thousand emails. Every day I get a message okay. saying, Would yeah. you like a reading? But the ones I've heard about that are which always gave me made me suspicious, um, which I never purchased, where we can do email reading. You email me this question, I'll send you the answer. And you've read probably that people they'll say, you know, you told me I'd get my reading in five to seven days and it's been two weeks. Well, you need to be more patient. If you keep emailing me, I'm not going to get do it for you. I'm not giving you a refund either. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. It's and that, you would think that'd be so simple. I mean, if they say, it doesn't even have to be all that exact. They could say, you know, I'm having, I, I'd like some concerns about my love life, or I'd like, I have concerns about, you know, where I'm going in my future. Or what, I mean, it's, you could put out something so easily, just copy and paste if it's and love, it money, reminded me of something. There's yeah. so much to remember. <laughs> this was the class that I attended on. Like I said, I don't think it was Zoom yet. I think it was Skype. And the woman had said she had purchased her calendar for the year. Mm -hmm. And she said, um, excuse me, I have a question. The calendar I purchased and my son purchased is the same exact calendar with predictions. Oh, that was a mistake. Oh, 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 my, my, just email the office will fix that. Oh, ouch. So, so, so you can purchase a, you can purchase a calendar that's supposed to have your year and your year of predictions in it. And I think it's 300 bucks, 375 or something like that. I'm trying to remember. And so, Is it that much? Wow. I think so. And so, um, oh my God. yeah, and I, th I think so. Well, that's a lot of predictions. So if the same household gets the same read same calendar 
in, in something that I have learned, there are some things that none of us are meant to know in the, that, that, that we're not meant to know some things in the future. And we're not, we do, not, I mean, we'll find out in good time, in due time, but we're not meant to know it. It doesn't matter who you ask, you're not going to find that out in the future, you know. I'm not sure I want to know some of that stuff. My gosh, I wouldn't want to know when I'm going to die or if something was going to happen to somebody I love. Or we're supposed to know. And no, yeah. I don't think I want to know. That would no, be- I don't think we're supposed to either. So no one, no medium, or they, it's not a medium, I guess at that point it's psychic, is going to, to tell us some of those things because I think we're not meant to know. Well, and that's we- something I've learned. And, and psychics should be avoiding anything that has to do with health or law. You know, it, that should be totally off. The, no, you shouldn't approach it. But I think that's the thing that I, that really struck me with you. Whenever I saw you, the, the video that you had made on Facebook about being ill, and I saw Thomas John's reading with you, I guess it was a Facebook Live. Bit, that's yeah, kind of, I think, definitely. when I reached out to you, because I said, oh, my gosh, he just gave health information. He And I've seen him do it many times. I have several videos of him giving. I don't really do health things, but I think you should check with your doctor. But I think that, you know, that medication you're taking, I think it's too strong for you. Or, you know, he'll say stuff like that. And I'm thinking for not giving health advice, you're giving health advice. There's another person I can think of that does that, that shouldn't be. Yeah, I know a couple others too. And <laughs> it's just like, it's, it's, they say, oh, we're not, but I'm going to do it anyway. And it's it's just, I know they'll say, well, you should follow up yeah. with the doctor and everything. But, and and they'll say, oh, one, one of them was, you're taking too many antidepressants or something. And I, oh. and you need to have that changed. I know. Oh gosh, I that's know. dangerous because if you get off those meds, you could commit suicide. Yes. You're not under the supervision of a doctor. He'll say. Well, he'll always say you should follow this up with a doctor, but people don't always do that. They might say the psychic, they really believe that psychic and they're going to say, oh my gosh. That's awful. Yeah. There's, there's someone out there that only does medical readings. And- oh, there's a bunch of them. I know some, I did an article on who is the one who does, there's a blinking woman. What is she, what is her name? She just blink. She blinks. Let me she- just grab my dog real quick. And he's looking oh, at sure. me. Let me just grab him. You dog. <laughs> That's funny. I almost adopted a dog named TJ. That didn't work out. So oh, I don't have a TJ. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful puppy. His I name is Newman, puppy. like Newman off Seinfeld. <laughs> so, oh, that is a beautiful puppy. Oh, you don't want to be held right now? You don't like oh. the talkings of TJ, he said. We'll just uh, <laughs> back down. My cats would, I could, they're sound asleep right over here. So I want to, <laughs> I want to show you something I learned today, Sam. Sam so. Yeah. So seatbelt psychic, right? Okay. You're following, you know what a seatbelt psychic is. I mean, oh, you're yeah. the other world of, of the stuff that he did before, you know, the other stuff. All right, everybody watching. I hope you're watching. I hope you're all sitting down so you can watch this. Let me find the screenshots. Let me think where I put them really quick. I, you I know, to be it. honest, I never thought that, I never thought that I didn't go, oh my gosh, the show is amazing. I never paid much attention to oh, it. Oh, so you didn't even follow it? <laughs> no. That's intriguing. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, so many people are following it right now. Okay, let me think where I put these screenshots. I have everything in storage, but I have multiple storages. And so um, I also have a team. And so with the team, I'm constantly moving things there. Okay, so I found this website today that has been very, it's a it's a pro, pro psychic website and i stumbled across it and they've been reposting my articles i've been a few of my articles i've been writing about thomas john i thought oh wow and but what the people are saying it's a blog and what they're saying is kind of kind they're like i know this is coming from the skeptical world but i think this woman's got a point look at the evidence she has and that kind of thing so they're being very kind about how they're you know they're saying it and that if thomas john is really doing this that's really bad you know because we, this just makes everybody look bad and that kind of thing. So I said, oh, that's that's fascinating. And so I went and I looked a little further. <clears throat> and in there, um, they had posted one of the seatbelt psychic 
um, videos, like a clip. And that's probably what I should show. It's just that instead of looking for these darn screenshots. Susan, where is it? Hold on. Hang, hang in there, your horses. Um, and I should have had this ready for you because it would have been much more interesting. Do you mind if I grab something to drink real quick? No, I'll put it on pause. Okay, so I should put my, I'll put myself on. No, you, yeah. Okay, thanks for letting me take it. Uh, we've got a little bit of a break. But uh, Sam was just telling me something about the screenshots. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> I was amazing. Okay, I'm writing a book. So I had to go back and get all the, the citations that we'd already collected. And I had to get the URLs to everything. And I had to save all the URLs so that I could make them citations for the book. So my team member had given me the, those screenshots. He said, I was watching this uh, webinar that Thomas John had done and these screenshots come up on the screen. And he says, so I just paused it and I collected the, uh, the screenshots. And I said, oh my gosh. And those screenshots show what you were saying. Go ahead and say what it is they show. So You're they show the obituary, the obituaries of people that would attend his live event in, through uh, in Wilmette, Winnetka, Racine, Wisconsin, all in the same region in Illinois. It's a regions that have quite a bit of money. So he comes out that way quite a bit. And then there was a tab on chakras and his class was on chakras, correct? I think it was. Yeah. And he's, and, and there was also a, uh, like a Intellis, Intellis.com. It's a search engine you use to find people. These were all on his desktop. You guys, this is all on his screen. And there was, there was, uh, yeah, there was like three obituaries that he'd been Google searching and the IntelliSight, site and, oh, one of my other people put together a whole, a whole thing on plagiarism. So they, so we have the videos, we kept all the videos of Thomas John doing these talks about like temperatures and chakras. And I mean, he's doing, he's doing a, a like a class as if it's real. But then my person on my team went and found the actual websites. He's reading them verbatim. Oh, it's wow. like, it's like, we have tons of that material. It is just like, he's in, you could see him and you could take them. <laughs> you could take the website and you take him talking and it's just him going, just reading it and adding some ums and ahs and stuff in there. It's incredible. So wow. I've never written about that. It's just like, oh my God, on top of everything else he does, he he's plagiarizing because he never mentions who he's got it from. Oh, I'm getting this from such and such as website. No, it's just as if it's coming off the top of his head. It's incredible. But anyway, as I was saying about this book is that I went back to try to find these citations and I thought to myself, okay, I'll go back and I'm watching the video waiting for the screenshots to come in. I'm thinking there's going to be screenshots like for a while. It's a second. It is one second on the screen. And I had to put it into software so I could get it. So it stopped right at there. And then I had to clip it so that it showed him like not, not looking at his desktop and then telling people I'm going to look at my desktop or I'm going to look at, I'm going to look for something. And then it's on the screen, off the screen. And then he, then he says, then he pulls up the screen share. He says, okay, do you guys all see that I'm talking about chakra or whatever? And you're like, how did my team member find that? That was one second on his desktop. Yeah. It was incredible. I'm so impressed with my people. <laughs> I thought I would have never even noticed. It. I mean, I probably would have been just looking away and never even noticed this thing flicker on the screen for a moment. But once you slow down the video, you just pause it and you stop it and you see it. But And you know, when you see the area all along Lake Michigan, all the different obituaries for those cities, it's not just like he had one. You could tell he was, there was a spirit circle or something coming up soon. Oh, that makes sense. And then I could probably date that. Yeah, because he, I know that goes to Highland Park, Glencoe, Wilmette very often and Lake Forest, all of those. Very wealthy. Like right next to each other along the lake. Very wealthy communities. One of the women on the obituaries I reached out to, I found her on Facebook. 
when she, I mean, it wasn't her obituary. She didn't die. But I mean, it was, um, she was the person who was, who was probably had the circle. And I reached out to her and she's never responded. I don't think she's even seen my message. I'm thinking I should probably try another way of getting a hold of her. Yeah, it could be because you're not a friend. She can't, she yeah. doesn't click open on that message. Yeah. Lots of people are, don't use Facebook like, as much as I do. So almost everybody doesn't use Facebook. <laughs> I'm one of the rare ones. <laughs> so anyway, today I just stumbled across this on just, it's been out here for a couple of years, but I don't know how we missed it. I don't know how we missed it. I'm not going to play this video, but I'm going to show you something on here. Now, this is YouTube. This is Seatbelt Psychic. And what's going on here is he's going to give a reading to this guy in the back. Okay. I've been writing about Facebook. I mean, Seatbelt Psychic for quite a while now. I've got like multiple articles about it. I've got bunches of videos on this and I'm going to do a video on this because I, but I just found this today. So there's all these camera angles and stuff and people keep arguing with me. They're saying, well, if it's an Uber, of course they have cameras. I'm like, there's at least nine cameras angles on this darn thing don't give me don't give me that look there's camera angle camera angle there's a camera angle looking out the window here's another camera looking out his yeah. window i mean there's multiple cameras you'll see him cameras on the top besides i've got pictures of the inside of the freaking car anyway so this guy gets a reading it's really really emotional his, his brother has died in drunk driving i believe it was really awful so heartbreaking down here in the comments, this guy says, this was me who lost my brother and this was totally unexpected. And there's his name. Can you see that from there? I don't know. Yeah. Small. There's his name. This is me. And there's 78 replies. He's, and somebody asked him, were you pre-selected? He says, no, I wasn't pre-selected. And then this guy says, well, were you on your way to work or did you call Lyft or Uber? Because there's a lot of people say that, that, you know, it, looks like people were picked up somewhere mm -hmm. and if you look farther down he says um i knew i was oh he's responding to somebody else he goes i knew i was signing up for something regard regarding some kind of show but i assure you i didn't know what it was and this was i was not too happy about it but afterwards when they mentioned my brother i just crumbled so he's admitting that he knew he was going to be on a tv show he signed up for it. So in other words, they had his information far in advance. He gets in the car. He didn't know it was going to be a reading and he wasn't too pleased with it. And then he goes, he loses it. He's really emotional on the, on the, on the whole thing. And then, and then here comes the smoking gun. Uh, I guess there's multiple smoking guns in this story. And then if you click on his YouTube channel, here it is. Here's his YouTube channel. And it's all about um, his brother dying, who chose to drink and Aww. drive, and the whole story's there. You know Poor the man. whole thing, and he's and he's talking about you know how he's it's very depressing. He he's trying to come out and say you know drinking and driving's bad and so on. But this video was made in 2018, and that's right after. And then psychic um, seatbelt psychic is filmed right after. So this is. February 5th, 2018. And let's go back to his comments. And see I'm what just that. moving my, my computer real quick to sit by the dog. So just so you know, I'm fine if I'm moving because <laughs> he's getting antsy. Oh, dogs. Cats, they just sleep. Never a big deal. Where is his comments? Um, I feel bad for that man. Four years ago. So let's see. Well, it says I'm going to get set up for therapy. Oh my gosh, these stupid commercials. I don't. Four years ago. Oh, here's the comment. I wish you would say what day. Four years ago. And this is 2023. So that'd be 2019 ish. So, in other words, his YouTube channel where he's making the plea to people don't drink and drive. Oh, did you cutie? Are you the cuties? <laughs> Are you the cuties? You want to go for walkies? Um, so he makes a YouTube channel talking about his brother's death and dying in a very tragic way. Then he goes and he subs then he sees an ad for um, Seatbelt Psychic. Well, he sees an ad for a show. He applies for it. Oh, and he also says in the video that he lives nearby. 
He applies for the show. He shows up. He has to apply, filling out paperwork. He shows up and then he's on the show and he gets a reading of exactly what was on his YouTube channel. And I was going to say, when you're applying to be on the show, they must be pre-screened to see who has information that's easy to find. I hate to say it. Well, I know that's what's going on, but I am not, I'm not confident that the show isn't on it. Yeah. Because I think that would be way big secret that I don't think Thomas John would went out there. I think he is doing, he or somebody on his team is doing it. Somebody very close to him. He could easily do this. So I'm sure he's probably given some kind of a head notice of who's going to be on the show. Yeah. And if they're applying to the show, yeah, they got to check them out. You don't want to have just some, you know, some dangerous person or somebody wanted or something like that on the show. You need to have somebody has to look it into it. And then the mortician episode adds something else. Which one? <laughs> the mortician. Oh my gosh. If he had my job, he'd be passing out all the time. Oh, I shouldn't lie. That's true. <laughs> so, so Samantha, what's the bottom line of all this? Oh, it's a long, it's it's a lot to say. Well, first off, my whole message to anyone out there who's I'll let you down. I you don't like this TJ talk, I see. You get Nancy. <laughs> is, um if you're if you're grieving and you're in that much pain go seek out a grief counselor a licensed and grief counselor don't go looking for a medium i mean later down the line if you've already started to heal quite a bit and you want to that's fine but at first please please don't <laughs> because i just don't i don't think that's productive to your healing because you're relying on someone right and you should not should not rely on a medium just as you would I'm not even thinking you should rely on a counselor you, because we, you should be given steps on how to get through your grief and tools and a, and a medium would not do that. And I'm not, and I'm, I'm not a skeptic. This is coming from someone who's I'm spiritual, not religious. That's how I like to say it. Mm -hmm. But also I just don't want people being taken advantage of or anything. Um, please, I would say, please don't be careful before you purchase purchase a reading with Thomas look at the evidence that showed that they have had even if you had a reading that's the whole thing let's say you had your reading and somehow he, he gets you that how do you know what he's saying is not found you know truthful or found online yeah well people are really grieving that's what's happening is they're just once they want to know okay it's, it's, a lot it's, of pain. it's a horrible thing um yeah. I wonder what you would say to somebody, I mean, you do this professionally, you know, so you're the perfect person to ask about these grief questions. When somebody says, what's the harm in it? And why, like myself, they're always telling me, why are you bothering with this, Susan? This is, he's just making people feel better. What do you say? I don't know if he's making feel be people feel better because one, you're creating dependence with that let's just say you get the reading let's say you get readings you're creating dependence on that because you're feeling that you don't have what in you to communicate with your loved one or you don't have the tools within you to kind of help you get through this grief so the first thing is dependence which is no good and then also let's just say you don't get the reading too you're out of money and you're grieving even worse now and you're feeling even worse about yourself and even more hopeless and desperate to, to, right. to reach out to your Chasing this person around. Yeah. And let's think, I mean, we all know the signs that people that a lot of people say, oh, there's a cardinal, there's a butterfly, there's a penny, there's a dime, there's a hummingbird. I can go on and on. Yeah, I hear them all the time. But if he... You know, you get that and to say, oh, well, they're sending, or this one, they're sending you a rose, which is, oh, that rose is crazy. amazing. Why? Well, it's always a rose. <laughs> it's always a rose. I know. I'm just like, please, I've, I've actually said this before to clients. If someone tells you they love you and here's a rose, I said, please, <laughs> please don't think that's actually your loved one because they're just coming up with stuff. Mm -hmm. There was a lady that I met at a bookstore 
And I wasn't even, I wasn't getting a reading with her. I just went to bookstore to look at some of their jewelry, but they also had medium ship there and books and other things. But I just, it's a great bookstore for jewelry, which is weird. You don't think of a bookstore having jewelry, but I heard her talking to someone and she said, they love you. They have a pink rose, sweetheart. They love you. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I think I actually said something to the woman working there. That was the manager. I said, I'm having bad feelings about this woman. And she goes, you're not the first person to say that. And she didn't work there much longer after that. So I said, you know, but that's the whole thing. It's, um, I think there is harm because it's, you're, you're complicating the grief more. Don't they have to, in the process, isn't there like a process to grief? I mean, everybody grieves differently, but if the way I look at it is, if you have had somebody die and then you're you're able to reach out to them and have a conversation with them, you're not really moving through the grief. It's not healthy. That's what I my thought is. Is that am I on the right path there? I promote with the, the client and, and it, it all depends. We do an assessment on what their religious beliefs. But let's say I have someone who's more spiritual religious. Mm-hmm. I, I tell them a lot you have the tools within yourself to have the conversation with your loved one. And what we do is we make little Mason jars with little tea lights. And if you have a message or things your day, you just put it in there and that's your message to your loved one. And that get, and sometimes they like doing that in the morning. It kind of like uplifts them to have that little jar to put a message, you know, and it just depends on their beliefs. That actually is very sweet. It's like yeah. you know, writing a letter and then maybe burning it or something that idea of, you know, I'm, 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 it's cathartic, you know, you're getting it out. Yeah, we do a lot. I do a writing grief group Mm -hmm. and they write like a letter, like, what do I still have in guilt within me? Or what would I like to say? I didn't have a chance to say and getting it on that paper really helps. And then you just put that envelope in a drawer and you can go back to that in a few months and see how that's changed. And you write another letter. I think that's much more useful than going to see. I I think that sounds really great. Again, it's it's yeah. within yourself and you're not paying somebody to be in contact, sending you a text message or something, you know? Yeah. And and the, the grief counselors that I work with, because we work with, it's, it's a, we're a group of hospice. We work with the hospice. Uh, um, it's a group of four of us. And we always say too, like, we're giving you the tools to move through your grief. We're not making you dependent on us. That's because we have, we have limited sessions that they get because they get it free with the services. Mm-hmm. So can we offer grief workshops and that just so they have tools and they can make those connections with people so they don't feel alone. But I think that's really helpful. Right. And never once do we say in there, go contact a medium. <laughs> You'll be with us for life. You will never get through this whole process. We're, you're giving them the tools to move through. And yeah, to you imagine if you if you met someone and they said, I've been seeing the same counselor for 25 years with my grief, you'd say, hmm, you get red flags right away. Absolutely. It's like, no, that's not a good sign. Something's not right. You need a new counselor or you need something. But that's not. Yeah. There, um, I did a video just really recently and you watched it. And it was an offhand comment that Thomas John had made. And it was somebody he was he was talking to, and it sounded like the grief that the child had died a while back, well, a year or more. And it was a comment. He said, it was supposed to be this woman's nephew. And he said, um, the room is still together, right? It's still all set up and everything. Because and the and the person he's talking to said, Yeah, it's still set up. And he goes, Yeah, because I think he's hanging out in there and he's there all the time. And then he went on. And I said in the video. I don't know if that's a good thing, having, you know, keeping a room like a memorial, like a museum to the person who's died. At some point, you need to move your, you need to move through that, do what you got to do with the room. You know, of course, you're going to have to clean it out. You're going to have to change it, paint it, whatever you're going to have to do, keep the mementos. But I don't think it's, if somebody told me that that the loved one I, I miss so badly and I'm grieving over so badly was in a room and all I had to do is go sit in that room and I'd be with him. He'd be there watching me. I don't know if I'd leave the room. I would be, it would be very difficult for me to feel like I was getting through that really difficult part of grief. And you had something to say about that. What did I you said think? that's unethical. 
because that's very unethical because can you imagine, let's say that person didn't change that room in 10 years. Mm -hmm. It's in horrible pain and sits in there. Now they've moved into complicated grief and they're in a really bad way. That, that's being, that, with that comment, you've just promoted that behavior and they think that, that, that their loved one's only in that room. I like to say too, like the people that the religious, spiritual, mm -hmm. wouldn't your loved one want you to be happy? They don't want you to keep that room. They want you to, be able to you remember them and you can have some things in that room that represents them but start to make it your own with touches of that loved one and i think i mentioned like a blanket or a picture you know right you know my dog my dog passed and i have a blanket that still smells like him and i'm not washing it but yeah. that's because it has a scent and that's my one thing i'm like that's just gonna stay by the bed i think know? that's very common i hear that with a lot of mediums They'll say, oh, you, you, you were in the closet and you, you found their dress and you smelled it, or you found your dad's shirt and you smelled it. And people will say, oh, I've kept it in plastic or something, you know, kept it in a plastic bag and I can take it out and I can smell it once in a while because it's still, I think it's a very common yeah. thing that mediums will say, because I think that's normal. You want to smell them. You it's want to smell what their aftershave smelled like or what they yeah i think that they and mediums know it's common so they use that often the other thing that that i hear from a lot of mediums is they'll say to a person who they've loved like a a, a in a you know fiance boyfriend or you know a spouse some significant other they'll say they they're watching over you they always love you you're their soulmate and so on and i think that seems harmful too because it just what happens in the future is you meet other people and you think they're watching you. What is, you know, I mean, watching you, that's kind of creepy. And with the other person, or how do you really end up having a real soul mate kind of relationship with that new person? If you're always in the back of your mind, oh, my real soulmate is a person who died. I don't know. It just feels. I don't like that term twin flames or soulmate because i think that can be well first off i think with soulmate you can have a pet as a soulmate you can have a friend you can have a family member where you feel that close connection so right. one soulmate i think that's silly but i don't like the twin flame i think that is actually quite dangerous because you can get two people in a very toxic relationship with this bush and pill and people will say it's my twin flame so what you're telling me is you're accepting this horrible abusive behavior because you think they're their twin flame i don't like that yeah. And just the idea that if, if some, yeah, just this idea that they're stuck, I know that they're trying, I know these mediums are saying the thing in that moment to make them feel good, but I don't think it's healthy, especially giving advice to somebody who's, you're not a trained therapist. You don't know exactly what's going on in their lives. I've seen Thomas say on seatbelt psychic and other places saying, you know, you should, you should get that relationship back with your sister or whatever. You guys aren't speaking anymore. And your mom is telling me that she doesn't like that. You guys aren't talking anymore. Or, um, you know, you should take that job opportunity or you should, you know, these things he's making suggestions. And if you really believe him, they might not be good. to. Maybe you shouldn't be getting back in a relationship with that toxic sister of yours, you know? Yeah. And what if, what if you grew up in a very toxic family system and then you're going to go back to that family member, it might be better for your, for your own good to distance yourself from that. He's not a counselor. He's not a licensed therapist. And he doesn't know the whole story. And no, and I just had one, uh, I think I uploaded a video a day or so ago, the woman she calls in and she, it was the same radio show you're on. And she says, um, you know, he could, you can clearly tell he's hot reading. And he says, you know, that she wants to go to med school and, and she says, yeah, I'm a nurse right now. And he says, yeah, I think you should go in and get your PhD, you know, your medical degree and all that. And she's like, oh, wow. And she he goes, your, your grandfather's watching over you right now. He's so proud of you for doing that. And she's oh my gosh. And so I know he's trying to push her into going and doing this thing that she's already doing. But then I ask him the video, what if she ends up getting into med school and hates it? What if she gets into school and she finally realizes to herself, this is awful. I want to do archaeology or I want, to, I want to join the Air Force and I don't want to do med stuff anymore. I faint at the sight of blood or I don't know, whatever it is. But then she's thinking, 
this guilt. My grandfather's watching me and he really wants me to do, <laughs> do this. Oh, well, that's awful to, to think someone's going to have that guilt, but it's true. She, and will, also she may go in it for years before she finally gets out of it and says, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, I a good example of that, and she will remain nameless, but there is a place um, by where I live and this woman is very unethical in readings. I photographed, I know this because I, I photographed her her shop. Ooh. I did interiors of the shop. And she had a person coming in asking about his uh, significant other. And she said that she was that cheating, that she was cheating on him. And he went and murdered her. Yep, he went in two times, two oh times to the God. And um, yeah, they said she was, you know, cheating and doing this and that. And he went and found her at the predator her job at the PF Changs and and murdered her. So, yeah, just think about that. Telling someone like they're cheating on you. What? what? Oh my God. And I've seen these psychics do this exact same thing. I've not seen a result like that, but you think there's some harm in that. I've seen, I've seen them say, um, oh my God, it just stunned me that what you just said. I've seen them say, well, I've seen uh, Sylvia Brown back in the day. She would, she would tell people like, they'd say, do you see me getting married to my boyfriend or whatever? And she'll say, no, he's a, he's a bum, dump him. He's sitting next to her. Oh you my know? gosh, that's funny. And, or no, he's cheating on you. I've seen them say that. Yeah, he's cheating on you, sweetheart. You need to you need to dump him. He's right there. She don't know. And you <laughs> think about how awful that is. I there was a Sylvia Brown did a did remember she did Montel. And um my grandma loved that show, so I would sit and watch oh Sylvia. She called her her Sylvie. So I'd sit and watch it with her, but looking back. I've done so much research. We started on Sylvia Brown. She was my first medium that I really dove into. But there was this one where she, she, the, 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 the wife comes on the show, this mother, missing child, mother comes on the show and um, her, and on the show, the family's there in the audience. And Sylvia says, Oh, I'm seeing your daughter. She's still alive. She's not, she's not in LA. She's actually in San Diego. You know, she's, she's, she's there. She's working in like strip clubs and stuff like that. Right. And, and so the family goes down to San Diego with all these missing family folders, you know, like, have you seen my daughter? You know, have you seen my, turns out they find out that she had been murdered and she'd been murdered way before that. She'd never left LA. And the person who murdered her was sitting next to her because it was the son-in-law. He was right there, right next to her, right next to the mother of the child. And Sylvia is like, oh no, she's alive. And she, I, I can imagine what this guy was thinking. <laughs> he can't say a damn thing. Oh no, I murdered her. She's, <laughs> she's not in LA. She's not in San Diego. Oh my God. And I've seen Thomas John also on Facebook lives, I've seen, uh, oh God, there's so many I, I'd say, but there's one I saw, I've seen him do several times. One of them is on Seatbelt Psychic. And they're like, there's a mystery surrounding the death of my brother or whatever. And he's like, oh, you know what? I think they're guilty. I think they're the ones that they had something to do with it. The place that he died in and there's, oh, there's this other woman. She's involved somehow too. And I think you know who she is. And they're like, Oh, could it be so and so? And he's like, "Yeah, that's who I think it is." And she's involved. I think you need to talk to her again. I've seen him do that many times, as if he's solving a mystery. And you're like, "This person isn't around to defend themselves. You don't even know the story." And how how dare you? Yeah, I remember there was I don't know if it was a year or two ago, but he said he was going to start going into missing. Oh, sure. I just posted on Facebook. That's. Oh, he solved the mysteries in the Moscow, the Moscow, um, Idaho ones. Oh, he said people could hire him. This was a year or so ago. People could hire him for missing cases, for, 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 for kids, for mm -hmm. missing children. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, it's lucrative. And he says, I'm not taking any money for it. a lot of them will say I'm not taking any money out of it because if they hit it, it's instant fame. Right. So you don't have to charge the missing the family. You could just you just you will be instantly recognizable all over the world. The most famous person in the world. If you could if it was obvious that you actually did catch somebody. But he says he, he solved the mystery of the the Moscow uh, murders in Idaho. But this is before they found the guy. And he says, I have evidence of it or whatever. And I'm like, where where is this posting you made before we knew? Because he's making the, he's saying I solved it. But he's saying I solved it after it's already been solved. Yeah. Where's, where's the information where you post this beforehand? It's just. It's sad. It's really yeah. sad. Yeah, it is. And I looked at the woman that you posted that. The other one the the the, the card reading mm -hmm. the lady oh, that you had that I went awesome. to her website mm -hmm. I don't know if you went to her website I yeah. went to her website she said she cast spells I was like oh my gosh red flags this is but, a video yeah. that, that Sam's referring that I just put up it's the I have a called the worst psychic reading ever it was somebody who was filling in for Thomas John while he went to the bathroom or maybe he went to go check Facebook he came right back after that break and he was spot on. He was so hot with his hot readings. But uh, yeah, this woman, that was embarrassing. This woman did this reading and it was so embarrassing. It was so bad, guys, that they cut the reading. They, they cut the ending out of the reading. And then they didn't even show the second reading she did. No. And then I went to the website and anyone who says they're going to they can cast spells and do money charms and stuff. You run, run. <laughs> That's like someone who I, I, this doesn't involve Thomas, but I remember as an 18 year old, the friend of mine, there was a lady that was like, it was a, it was a gypsy. Mm -hmm. And she, I told me my, it was like a $20 palm rating. And she told my friend she needed to give her, she had negative energy around her. And I didn't know till after my friend had given her $200. And I said, what are you doing? And she said, I'm not going to find love unless I get rid of my negative energy. And I said, don't you dare go back. She wanted another hundred dollars. And I said, please just chuck it up and just don't go back. Oh my God. But it's just sad that those kinds of people pray. Yeah. They go in with a, like a oh. couple bucks and <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, Samantha, we should sum it up because I doubt anybody but me and you are watching this. I know it's just <laughs> even though it's full, it's it's got so much information in it. This has been really great being able to talk to you. Do you have any final words I should wisdom or knowledge or anything like that? Oh, what I was going to say is for anyone out there, please know that if you're looking to find out about the future, you'll find out in due time. You don't need a psychic or a medium for that the future and also like communicating with your loved one you have that within yourself and you don't you don't need that and i this is coming from someone who's not a skeptic this is just someone that's saying that's looking out for your best interest because there's a lot and i mean a lot of bad ones out there oh my so. gosh i feel like i'm i feel like i'm immersed with them it's so awful yeah people tell me oh it's all fun and games i'm like you have not been reading the posts i've been reading and you've not been talking to the women i'm talking to what do you think that this thing is about women because it's all women all all in the psychic world all, all the people who are who are seem to be we're interacting with they're all women there's some men there are some i could name not a lot a i can think of, of i can think of, i can think of a few that were men but, but why is it almost all women It's a, it's, it's a good question. I, I wonder if women are because they're more feeler, like they have, they are the more the, the, the type to show. The nurturers, like, the, the emotional ones. And feelers, yeah, the emotional ones. Not always though. I don't want to say that as a stereotype there, but a lot of times that's the way it is. I mean, they use the more intuitive part where a lot of men more logic. I, it, I I have not got a good answer, but all I know is that when I attend a reading, it is 90% 90, 90 female. If there's a male there, they're probably taken there by a female. They're I can there. think of a male that, um, that I know, which we can send you to, 
we can reach out. He would love for us to reach out to him, by the way. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you afterwards. Okay, <laughs> now I'll I'm going to hang up because I got to hear what that was. Yeah. All right, everybody. So thank you so much. Subscribe. Hit the little yes. bell so that you know when I'm putting out another video. I'll I, probably do more of these readings. <laughs> yeah, it's great, guys. Put comments in there. If you want to yes. see more of this kind of stuff, please let me know. Bye, everybody. Bye.